So here's our July garden. It's uh, hot, <laughs> to say the least, but things are growing. Let's go take a look around. Sometimes you wonder if it's telling the truth because it feels a lot hotter than it is and that's because of the humidity. Humidity is one of the dangers of summer gardening on the coast of Texas here. Uh, it stays humid a lot and the humidity just really uh, causes all kinds of diseases and fungi and uh, all kinds of things to happen to your plants. Uh, some of these plants don't like humidity but there are varieties you can grow here and I've got a lot of those in the garden right now. Well here are my spider mite attacked eggplants. And you can see that the leaves have mostly survived, but they look worse for wear. But notice my plant's putting on new growth, especially down below. So I've trimmed them up a little bit and taken off the fruit so they could focus all their effort to regrowing. And I think they'll survive. I think the new growth down here will uh, do just fine. I might top them off. I'm not entirely sure. So yeah, the eggplant are doing well. They've got some nice space and aeration now. I've taken out my tomato plants back there. And that's, uh, that's kind of sad. All the tomatoes in my garden are now gone. They've all been taken out. I do have a squash plant, a zucchini plant, that survived all the, the rigors of spring and summer, and it looks like it's doing well. I have some blossoms coming in, so we'll see if we get some more squash. That's encouraging. And so right in this area, I'm going to be planting uh, maybe some new eggplant, maybe some okra. I haven't, I haven't really decided yet what I'm gonna do, so I've just got the mulch remaining there. Same over here, I'm gonna put some, uh, maybe some eggplant and some okra over here as well. Uh, but down there in that area, I'll be planting cowpeas and I'll also be planting some cowpeas among that corn there. I haven't done anything with my Armenian cucumbers. Uh, they're looking awful. They're actually still thriving a little bit here and there, but uh, for the most part, uh, this, this whole thing is coming out and I'm gonna put more cowpeas in here as well. Sweet potatoes are doing fine. They got some rain, and the rain has really caused them to lush up a bit. These are my uh, standard store-bought orange sweet potatoes that my son and I uh, planted. You know, we, we did the slip thing in the water. That is a Japanese variety, and these are also Japanese varieties, and so they're doing well. In fact, uh, that one over there had a flower on it, and uh, so that's a good sign they're doing well. My citrus trees, I'm keeping them cared for. They've got some fruit on them. I probably shouldn't let them fruit this young, but that's hard to do. You see these beautiful things coming in. There's only four, three or four of them, so yeah, we'll see. But yeah, they're doing fine. Speaking of citrus, my Meyer lemon tree is loaded down with fruit. Not as much as this past year. That's because I had to prune the sucker up a bit and uh, keep it small so I can reach all the fruit, but it's got plenty of fruit there and we're gonna have a nice harvest this year as well. Figs are doing nice over here. All the figs are putting on lots of fruit. That's some beautiful looking fruit. It's gonna ripen up soon. Got some fruit on the tiger stripe. Um, yeah, fruit all over on these figs. The fig plant up in the front is being harvested now. It's ripening, and uh, that Celeste is one of my favorites. I've got uh, marigolds coming in volunteer all over the place. These things, uh, I like marigolds, so I'm gonna leave them there. But yeah, everything's looking good. I might need to fertilize my peppers there are looking a little yellow. It's about the time I fertilize, but uh, yeah, the rain that we've been having is helping everything look uh, really lush. Tomatillo plant that used to be over there died. And this is what it looked like when it started to die. So I don't know what's going on with this. I have no clue. This looks like some deficiency, but I have no clue. I've never grown to tomatillos before. And uh, yeah, it just died, so. Maybe we'll get some more fruit off of that. There's my little miniature corns. These are a blue sweet corn, and they're supposed to grow about that high and stop. So we'll see. I don't expect to get any fertilized ears off of them. There's only four plants that came up uh, out of this whole area that I had sown because we had a rat that came through and dug up all the seed. A squirrel, a rat, a bird, something did. And uh, yeah, so I've just left them there, but I'm gonna put cowpeas in this area. Like I said, I'm gonna put cowpeas over there as well. The beans over here, man, producing like crazy. All these are green beans, Kentucky Wonder. And uh, yeah, I've been eating a lot of green beans. These are the uh, mustard greens that are bolting. I'm gonna let them go to seed and harvest some seed. Here's the little seed pods. And uh, 
yeah, that's going to be a nice source of. These are really good. These greens are really nice. It's a green. The variety is called Green Wave, and uh, it's been real delicious. Rest of this bed, uh, I've taken out the tomato plants, so there's room down in there for some other things. And I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to plant out here. I've got a watermelon that's struggling along right there. Maybe I'll put another couple of watermelon seeds in here. It may be too late for that. But uh, I can certainly plug in some eggplants and okra or some cowpeas here as well. Peppers are doing well. All my pepper plants are thriving in the heat. They really are getting along just fine. So I've been harvesting off of these plants. Um, lots of uh, jalapenos, brown jalapenos. Tiaguito jalapeno. That is a uh, bikinho pepper, a little bird beak sweet pepper. So the peppers, they like the heat. This has been the garden path of doom this week. You see I've got a nice little fire ant mound right there that I didn't discover until I was digging around in my garden. So I got covered in fire ants the other day and they're all in this pot here. But this pot was right here. Then this morning I came out walking barefoot through my garden Right there I stepped on a red wasp, so now I've got a swollen foot. Yay. But it's still a place of joy. It's still a place of happiness. Now these beautiful zinnias, they're crazy. Look at that, taking over that whole corner of the bed. Lovely flowers. They really bring in the bees. And all my backup plants are still doing well over here. Even though they're in their pots, they're actually growing out through the holes down into the soil, so I haven't bothered to move them. Oh yeah, everybody's looking lush and green. Some more sweet potatoes there. I plugged in some peppers here where my uh, potatoes were before that disappointing potato harvest. Yeah, that was real disappointing. But uh, yeah, I put in some backup peppers there so we can continue to have cayenne and jalapenos as the summer wears on. Phoebe, what are you doing back there? Huh? You chasing lizards? Lima beans, let's take a look at those. These beans have been wonderful. And I'm letting some of these pods dry on the vine. I'll come in and pick these and shell them. And we'll have some lima beans. But you can see it doesn't seem to stop the production of uh, blossoms. Uh, these have been putting on tiny little, uh, there we go, tiny little fruits like that. We're gonna have a whole nother flush of, of beans soon. That's what they look like when they come in. This is what they look like when you let them dry on the bush. Lima beans, yeah, they love the heat. They do fine. There's my other eggplant, and it's doing fine over there growing with a little, little open space now that I've taken out the tomatoes that used to be right here. So we should get some fruit. I see some blossoms there. Yeah, man, these lima beans, very impressive. Christmas lima beans, very delicious, very impressive plant. I'll be growing these again. Nice bowl of figs there that I've harvested from my tree out front. These are Celeste, also called sugar fig. Very nice fig, one of my favorites. Actually, it is my favorite. And uh, I'm going to go harvest what today's... Uh, I'm going to go grab in today's harvest and place it in here. So here's my Celeste fig tree. It is my favorite fig. And this tree has been producing for me for 16 or 17 years. Being right next to the sidewalk, I have... Uh, yeah, pedestrians and neighbors that just kind of help themselves. But you can see there's one right there. When they're droopy like that, they're just about ready. I could pick that one. Yeah, that's almost ready. Just about ready. This one is better. You can see how it droops like that. If you pick them before this, they're not as sweet and juicy. So I like to wait until they are soft. Soft like that and droop. They need to really droop. Look at this one here. That's a good one. Let's find some more. What about this guy? Yeah, that guy's droopy, but the birds got him. This gives us an opportunity to look inside one without wasting it. Beautiful fig. All right, this one's not ready. We'll let that one droop. Come back tomorrow, it'll be just about ready. Same with that one there, not ready. From when I shot that video, and you can see they're droopy, the ones that I passed over now are drooping a little more. That one is just about ready, but, but not quite. This right here is what you're looking for. See how that's droopy all the way hanging down to the ground? This is a perfect fig. That is ideal. It's almost cracking. It feels like it's really soft. Yeah, that's a perfect fig. There's a good study right here. 
That one that's drooping down is almost ready. One more day it'll be ready. Now I have intentionally pruned and pinched this tree to give me lots of fruiting branches. And you can see right here, one of the old pinches right there caused that branch to finger out into like a, a hand. And then up here, I've done some more pruning and pinching. And so I've got these racks. There's one there. They, they, they shoot out like that to give me lots of very short uh, fruiting branches that I keep short. But uh, yeah, every year got a good harvest. Here are a couple of these pumpkins. These are Kogigu pumpkins. And I don't think they're mature. I'll probably just get to use them as uh, decorations. But uh, yeah, I got several and I've sliced some open to see how they were going. And so I've, I've wasted, oh, I, guess, I guess, five or six of them just checking on their progress. Since I've never grown these, I wanted to follow their progress, which means sacrificing some of them. But you're supposed to let them cure uh, in the sun for a couple weeks until the skin is super hard. That's what I'll do. At least I got some pumpkins. Yeah, that's more than I thought I would. This is a volunteer of some sort. Squash. Something. We'll see. If it grows. This came up in my uh, long bean pots. These were the long beans. The long beans ran their course and uh, have been pulled. But this was growing here, so I'll, I'll, let, I'll let it grow and see what it is. I like volunteers. Look at this. This is not even the most impressive part. This is a dark muscadine. And you can see some of them are starting to ripen up. But these will really start ripening uh, in about a month. Down here I've got my bronze colored ones. Look how many grapes are on here. Tons and tons and tons of them. I'm just really impressed with how, how much fruit these are putting on. It's just incredible. There's tons of it. I got the uh, I think 40 or 50 pounds last year and this year looks to be much more so yeah muscadine grapes these are in their fourth year the third year is when they really produced because it takes that long to train them to prune them properly and to keep a hand space between your growing branches and, and just basically train them but once you do that look at that man all down the, the wire there i've got fruit coming in tons and tons of fruit these muscadines make me very happy. This is the one down here that I accidentally cut. I'll tell you where I cut it. Last year, I accidentally cut the whole thing. Let's see if I can find it right about here. I cut the whole thing off. So all this is new growth. But you can see it's really taken over and they can't keep them hand, their hands to themselves. And I have to take them apart in the fall when they're dormant each year and trim them back so they're not grabbing onto each other because they'll ring each other with these uh, um, all these little tendrils here and you got to take those off each year but uh, yeah muscadines lots and lots of them makes me happy that's the summer garden again very brief tour not a lot going on but what is going on is really nice um, you know it looks good for a summer garden we've had a nice rain uh, this past week and uh, yeah things are looking good looking up I'm encouraged once again, our videos are going to slow down a bit in the summer because it's not as active as the spring garden and the fall garden. We will be doing two to three videos a week during the fall garden because, man, that's the best time to garden in this area. It's absolutely perfect. Uh, we'll grow all through the winter into uh, February and March, and then we'll start our spring garden again. But until then, I'm probably just going to do one to two videos a week. If, if I get one a week, I'll be happy, but I'm going to aim for two. So I really appreciate you uh, liking our videos. Uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. And share us uh, with your friends if you think would be uh, helpful to them. Uh, like us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening. Bye-bye.